We're now going to try to understand how the North Pacific Gyro Oscillation, the NPGO, is useful in linking decadal variations in the eastern and western boundaries of the North Pacific. First, let's get a look again at the large-scale spatial pattern of the NPGO in the satellite sea surface height in the north over the North Pacific. This map is obtained by taking the NPGO index and correlating it point by point with the global satellite sea surface height data. Now again we find in this structure this dipole which is associated with an intensification of the North Pacific current. Now this data is obtained, this map is obtained using data from 1993 to 2007. So before proceeding any further let's verify to what extent this spatial pattern is robust. To do that we're going to look at some data output from a model, in this particular case the Japanese Earth Simulator Eddy Resolving Global Model, OFIS. This is an integration that has been performed globally at 10 kilometer resolution forced by the ANSIPRI analysis from the 1950 to present. And here I extracted data over the North Pacific and computed uh, in the same way the NPGO index as I did for the for the for this map over here, and then correlated the NPGO index of the OFIS model with uh, the global uh, sea surface height data from the OFIS model. And you can find that these two maps are quite similar, uh, again, um, suggesting that this pattern is robust. So now, let's go forward, and here again is the NPGO index, and let's test the hypothesis uh, that NPGO links coherent changes in the eastern and western boundaries. To do that, let's go back to the definition of the NPGO, which is that uh, the NPGO modulates the strength uh, of, the, of, this, of the gyroscale circulation. So to verify that one more time, if we now take in this green box here over the North Pacific current area, if we take an index like the average sea surface height gradient across uh, you know, this region over here and we make an index out of it, uh, we find that indeed this uh, gradient index, which is the strength of the North Pacific current, is very much correlated with the NPGO. So this is what we expect because the NPGO is the modulation of this gyre. Now a similar analysis can be done in the Kurosho Washer extension region, which is characterized by this red box over here. And in fact this analysis was conducted by a paper by Taguchi et al. in 2007, who did ba basically the same analysis. They took the, the gradient of sea surface height across this region and made an index out of it and what they find is uh, that there is some uh, decadal modulation associated with this index and this index is tracking the strength of the Kurosho Asher extension. Now if we compare the NPGO index with uh, an index of the KOE or the Kurosho Asher extension region we find that the two indices are strongly correlated, they're correlated 0.5 with the lag of 3 to 4 years. Um, so then the question arises, what dynamics explains coherent variations in the eastern and western boundaries with this three to four year lag between the NPGO and the Kurosho Asher extension? Well, of course, a, a candidate for these coherent changes uh, is the Rossby wave dynamics, in that di uh, Rossby wave typically have a westward uh, propagation, and therefore uh, this westward phase lag could be associated with Rossby waves. To, to check whether this Rossby wave dynamic actually fits the the hypothesis, uh, we're going to begin by taking a transect along uh, latitudes um, 32 to about 40 here in this region and make a transect, a time transect of this of this particular region. And so here now is a plot of the of the average uh, you know latitudinal trans as a function of time. So here this would be the eastern boundary, this is the western boundaries. And, and so you can see if you stack all these trends as a function of time, you have this westward phase propagation. And in this particular case, in the satellite data, you find that over the 90s all the way to 2000, you have anomalous low sea level height in blue, and then high in red. If we do a similar analysis in the office model, so we take the same transect in the office model, and, and now we, have, we can do this analysis from the 1950 to present, again you find this uh, westward phase propagation in the sea surface height anomalies, and again, if we look at the overlapping period in the 90s and 2000, you find that there is some correspondence between office and satellite. We can look at the degree of correspondence a little bit more you know, rigorously by uh, taking a time series of sea surface height anomaly in this region here as a function of time and in this region. If we look at the satellite data, we find uh, that the average time series along here uh, is characterized by low sea level height in the 90s, which is right here, and red 
and high sea level height uh, after 2000, which is uh, right here. If we did the same plot now in the office state along this transect, uh, we find that the office sea surface height anomaly tracked very well the satellite and extend the data backwards in time showing these low frequency decadal modulations. Now what are the dynamics uh, driving the sea surface height anomaly? Well one hypothesis is that they're driven by uh, Rossby waves which are forced by uh, wind stress curl anomalies. Uh, so in order to test that hypothesis we can use a linear Rossby wave model which says that sea surface height variations uh, minus uh, a propagation term associated with the Rossby wave with the phase speed CR equals, uh, you know, is forced by the wind stress curl. Now such a model has been used by Bo Chu in a paper in 2007 and what he did, he took the wind stress curl from NCEP uh, along this transect and he just integrated this equation along the characteristic uh, wave path which is, you know, in the latitudinal direction and, um, and this is basically the output of this model. If you look at this output, you can find again that there is some low frequency modulation in the sea surface height and that there is some correspondence between the linear Rossby model, office, and satellite. In fact, if we take now again a, a time series along this particular transect here and we plot it on top of here, we find that in fact the, the, this light blue line, I'm just going to do it one more time, you see it fits very well with the, with the office data and as well also the satellite data. So this seems to suggest that to leading order, the dominant dynamics are in fact Rossby waves which are excited by uh, wind stress curl anomaly. Now to further refine this model and test uh, whether uh, what is the relation with the NPGO, we can put forward the idea that there is a common forcing between the NPGO and the KOE. And this common forcing is associated with the NPO, which is the North Pacific Oscillation, which we saw in a previous uh, presentation that is the forcing pattern of the NPGO. So now we can take the same linear Rossby model and uh, instead of using the full wind stress curl anomaly, we're going to use only the part of the wind stress curl anomaly that are associated with the NPO and we can perform the same type of model. And this is the output of such a model. So this is the NPO Rossby wave model. And we find that the overall the contour is a bit smoother but you can find that the low frequency variations in this linear and PO Rossby models are consistent with the ones in the in the data, the office and the Rossby model forced by the full wind stress curl field. And now we can again take a time series in black along this line and plot it over here and we find that indeed even the NPO linear Rossby model fits very well the data. So this seems to suggest that indeed uh, the relationship between the eastern and western boundary come from the fact that both the NPGO and changes in the Kurosho Ashra extension region are associated with a common forcing which is this NPO, the North Pacific Oscillation. So here now is an index of the North Pacific Oscillation and it's a sea level pressure anomaly uh, over Hawaii. So this is this blue index and once again we said this is the forcing pattern uh, of the NPGO and this is the NPGO index so if that's the case then one could hypothesize that uh, we can reconstruct the NPGO index by saying that the NPGO index at future time is equal to the NPGO index today plus a forcing term and which is the NPO in this case and times you know delta t which is the time integration. So in other words the NPGO is an integration in time of the NPO index and if we test such a model in green we find that indeed this model uh, works very well and, and therefore suggesting that in fact the NPGO is just directly forced by the NPO. So now the idea that this NPO not only forces the NPGO response in the central and eastern Pacific, but there's also a lag re uh, response uh, in the Kurosho Ashra extension, which is uh, evident by comparing the KOE index, which is the strength of the Kurosho index of Taguchi, uh, with the NPGO index uh, in black. Uh, and again, this, there's a phase lag of about three to four years. Um, and uh, this is the western North Pacific. So this is all for this presentation.